Screamer, and welcome to Scream Stream, your spoiler-free guide to streaming horror entertainment. I'm your host, Jimbo Lewis. If you're new to the show, what I do is pick a horror movie from one of the various streaming services and give it a spoiler-free review. Scream Stream is available wherever podcasts are served, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many more. Just head over to ScreamPod.com. You can also watch me play horror games live on Twitch, Monday through Friday, starting at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, over at twitch.tv slash Jimbo Lewis. So, welcome back, everyone, to a brand new season of Scream Stream. It has been a while. I apologize for my dog. He's he's driving me nuts, y'all. <laughs> driving me nuts. Uh, it is a brand new season. Uh, we are on season three. I'm so excited. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to, to bring the show back or not, uh, but thanks to a few awesome contributors to the podcast i'm able to bring this back and um hopefully we can get back to a weekly schedule i just want to give a shout out to uh, lyle my patron and eric vasquez uh, who a who made a charitable contribution to the show this week uh eric and lyle thank you all so much i appreciate your support of the show so what have i been up to uh i've been up to quite a few things uh on twitch I've ramped up my horror game playing, so if you want to watch me play horror games and jump and die and get scared, uh, you can watch that over at uh, twitch.tv slash Jimbo Lewis. Uh, I do that Monday through Friday, uh, starting at 9.30 p.m. We usually go for about two hours. Two hours is kind of like my max. Uh, I do have a lot of fun over there. We have a great community uh, if you want to head over there and join. Uh, you don't have to sign up for an account. You can just watch. You won't be able to chat live, but you can you can still watch. Uh, so I would encourage you to do that. Uh, I've been watching several things on on uh, streaming recently. Uh, we started watching uh, American Horror Story Cult because we never did get around to watching that one. Uh, and American Horror Story hasn't really been one of my favorite shows, but uh, wifey wanted to watch it, and uh, so we did. It was it was okay. It wasn't bad. Uh, it could have been better, I think. Uh, maybe I just didn't enjoy it as much. I don't know. I haven't really been like a huge fan of American Horror Story. Uh, I enjoyed Roanoke. Like Roanoke was the one season that I really enjoyed a lot. Uh, the rest of them, not so much. I do want to watch the new one though. Is it 1984 or 1986 or something like that? Where it's like a, a summer camp slasher themed uh, season. I am excited for that. I do want to watch it. Uh, so that one looks good. Uh, on Shutter. Uh, that's S H U D D E R dot com. <laughs> I've been watching a few things. Uh, Creep Show is out now. The the new series of Creep Show. I watched the first episode. Episode two is out. I haven't watched it yet. Uh, the first episode was great. Uh, it is a it's an amazing throwback to the original series. Uh, lots of practical effects. Uh, the colors are great. Uh, you see like these bright reds and bright blues. Uh, nice work on the colors. Uh, it, it's it's just a great show. It's a great show. Uh, the stories were good. Uh, and I can't wait to watch episode two. Also watched Body Bags a day on Shudder. Shudder's getting a lot of really good f uh, films in here uh, recently. Uh, Body Bags is one of those from John Carpenter. I uh, really liked that one. Watched that today. Uh, Hell House LL3 or LLC3 is up. Uh, I think that com concludes the, the Hell House trilogy. Uh, I will be reviewing that one as well uh, on a later episode. I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll do it next week. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, and then uh, that's really about it for the memorable things. Oh, there's a great, a great documentary on Shutter called Why Horror? If you're one of those people who has to explain to everybody why you like horror so much, uh, if you can, show them this documentary or at least tell them about it. Really good documentary about why we love horror so much, what makes horror so uh, entertaining. Uh, really, really good documentary. Highly recommend. Uh, and that is on Shudder. If you don't have Shudder, you can get a seven-day free trial. Uh, they are not sponsors of the show. I just really like their service. Uh, like their service a lot. I think I've been I've been a subscriber since since they launched. I think it's been a while. Uh, they are now available in Canada and the UK. So if you are in the UK, I uh, do recommend that for y'all. Uh, so this week on the show, I'm going to be reviewing In the Tall Grass. And this is available on Netflix. Uh, unfortunately, Netflix has been slacking lately in the horror department. 
I just haven't seen a whole lot of good things added. Uh, I watched a couple of the original Netflix horror movies and they just weren't, weren't that great. There is a series up there now called Marianne that I do want to watch. Uh, I heard that was pretty good. Uh, so we'll give that a look. Uh, but tonight we're recording, we're, we're recording, we're reviewing In the Tall Grass. This was written and directed by Vincenzo, Vincenzo Natale. Jesus. And this was based off the short story or novella by Stephen King and Joe Hill. This stars Laisla D. Oliveria, Avery, Avery Whitehead, and Patrick Wilson. Patrick Wilson has been in a lot of horror stuff here recently. Quite a few things. Uh, for a brief plot synopsis, after hearing a young boy's cries for help, a sister and brother venture into a vast field of tall grass in Kansas, but soon discover there may be no way out, and that something evil lurks within. Let me start off with, as I usually do, with the technical aspects of the film. So, I mean, it looks good. It's a good-looking film. There's not a lot of color to it, because I'm mean, green is the main color in the film, because... I, I would say, I would say 80% of the film is shot in grass, in grass, surrounded by green. The camera movements are nice. There's some really cool aerial, aerial shots of the field. Not a lot of shaky cam, which is good. I appreciate that. Most of the shots are used on either Dolly or uh, their tracking shots. I'm going to assume with like a steady cams, a body steady cams, all that good stuff. Uh, it shot really well. It looks good. The editing was good. Acting was actually, actually enjoyed the acting. I don't know any of these folks except for Patrick Wilson. Uh, I don't recognize Avery. Is it, is it, it's not Whitehead. It's Witted. Whited? Witted. W-H-I-T-T-E-D. I don't recognize him. He's actually only done three films. Uh, Laisla. The Oliverio, the Oliveria, Jesus, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm butchering names. It happens. <laughs> uh, she's been in I Zombie, Gothica, Nikita, a few other things here and there, little things. I uh, don't really recognize her from anything else. And of course, we had Patrick Wilson. Uh, so acting, acting was actually really good from several no name folks who I have no idea who they are. The, the issue I have. Actually, well, in direction it was good. Direction was good too. The primary issue I have is the story just was convoluted. Uh, it didn't. I don't think it it translated well to the screen. I think this would have been better if I just read the novella. I don't think is. I don't think it's it's a good story for screen. Like there's just not enough time to explain what exactly is happening because most of the movie is these people lost in the grass and you see a lot of that for the majority of the film. And then closer to the end, we kind of see some other things happen. There's like some suspicion arising between the, the cast members and a giant thing in the middle of the field that that's supposed to be, well, actually we don't know what it is. Nobody explains anything. There's no exposition, uh, very little exposition. Uh, it just kind of, Here's a movie where a bunch of stuff happens in the grass uh, and we're not really going to explain anything to you. Just here, take it as it is. And it just, it just didn't translate. It just didn't translate well to a film. The premise was good. It had a great premise. Just the way you tell it on screen just did not work for me. By the end of the movie, I was like, okay, well, that was the thing that happened. <laughs> I'll never watch that again. But it has nothing to do with the actors or, or the direction or anything like that. I think it was just the, the writing it was just not good enough for film. There wasn't enough there. This could have, this could easily have been like maybe a mini series. Maybe. I don't know. It's just a lot of people walking around in grass and getting lost. The, the, the supernatural part of it just wasn't really explained well enough for me. There wasn't enough exposition. I, I, I know. When you watch horror films, there's a lot of times there's too much exposition and you talk to the audience as, as though they're stupid. This one, there just wasn't really enough. Like I understand the, the primary concept, but that's really about it. Like what, what is actually happening here? 
Nobody we watched. We I watched it with the uh, wifey and, and the child, and nobody liked it. <laughs> None of us liked it. Uh, and and wifey's pretty good about liking independent horror films, uh, and most of the films that I watch. We just couldn't. We just couldn't get involved in this one. Uh, and there you go for a rating. It currently has a five point six on IMDb. I'm going to write this out of five. I'll probably give this about two, two and a half, two, two and a half. Uh, should you watch it? I mean, you can, but don't get mad when you, when at the end, when you're like, that was an hour and 41 minutes of my life that I can never get back. Uh, it just, it just wasn't a good story for film. I do want to read the novella now. I would like to read it. Uh, to see if, if more, if more things are explained, if the storytelling is better, uh, I'm assuming it would be because Stephen King and his son wrote the book, uh, or the novella. I'd like to, I'd like to read that instead. Uh, cause as far as the film just was not good, man, just was not good. All right. So let's, let's, uh, I want to highlight a couple of things that's been newly released here recently. Uh, I want to start with shutter. And Netflix, I'm not really going to go into Netflix that much because, I mean, Netflix has, has like I said, it's, it's disappointed me on so many levels when it comes to horror. So I'm just going to skip past Netflix this week. Uh, the first first is uh, Ever After, which is a, looks like a German uh, horror film, zombie film. Uh, and then we have The Furries. This actually looks really interesting. Uh, it I watched the trailer. It looks pretty cool. It looks gruesome. It's got really good reviews so far. There's a couple like one star. Yeah, there's there's a couple one star here. And most most of it's just ass hats writing reviews. Um, here's 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 the the little synopsis here. Rebellious high school students Kayla and her best friend Maddie are abducted by a sinister presence while out bombing their neighborhood with graffiti. Waking up in the woods, bound and disoriented in a claustrophobic coffin-like apparatus, Kayla's first thoughts is of Maddie. Before she has a chance to ruminate on the on the dreadful fate that may have befallen her friend, Kayla notices a terrifying masked man fast approaching, armed with a razor-sharp axe. As a chase ensues, it soon becomes clear that Kayla and her pursuer are not alone. There are six more young young women, each with masked stalker assigned to them, hellbent on murder. So, I mean, it looks, it looks kind of like, um, kind of like the ultimate dead by daylight. If you ever played that, it's like the ultimate dead by daylight. We have a bunch of, bunch of killers and a lot of survivors just trying to survive. It looks interesting. I can't wait to see that. Uh, that is on my list of things to watch. Uh, body bags. As I mentioned, I watched this earlier today. The taking of Deborah Logan is on there now. That was a really good film. Uh, found footage, uh, creep show, the series, uh, one cut of the dead, which is a, a Japanese horror comedy. Saw the trailer for that. It looks good. It's gotten some really good reviews. I might check that one out. And of course, Hell House LLC Part Three. I think this is uh, rounds out the the Hell House trilogy. There, Train to Busan is now on Shutter. Really good film. I I have keep I keep meaning to review this on the show. And I just haven't got around to it yet, uh, but it is really good. And I do recommend it. Uh, then we have The Wrath, which is another, it's a Korean horror film. It's a remake of an older film, I believe. Uh, I do want to watch that. Uh, Beelzebuth, which I've, I've seen some positive reviews for that one. Um, there's a couple classics on here. Bad Moon, Hell Nights. I started watching Hell Night. I haven't finished it yet. Uh, enjoyed what I've seen so far. Oh, I know what I'm going to review next week. Next week, I'm going to review Innocent, Incident in a Ghost Land. Uh, I have a lot to say about this one. Uh, it is on Shutter now. It's a Shutter exclusive. I actually had somebody come in the in the the live stream and recommend the film to me. I never did get around to watching it. I couldn't find it anywhere. And then finally, I saw it on Shutter. I gave it a watch. So we'll review that uh, next week for the episode. Uh, there's a few other things: Chopping Mall, Why Horror, as I mentioned before, great documentary. Uh, pardon the dog. Uh, Nosferatu, the series. This is based on the novel written by uh, Joe Hill. Uh, and then we have the Summer Party Massacre 1 and 2. I do plan on watching those as well. 
Uh, and quite a few things. Shutter's really up their game, man. I am I am super impressed with Shutter right now. So on Amazon Prime, uh, we have a few things. Uh, Slugs from 1988 was a lot of. It's a lot of fun. It's a creature feature about killer slugs. Uh, Transylvania 65,000 with Jeff Goldblum uh, and Ed Begley Jr. Then we have Waxwork, also from 1988. Great classic film. Then we have The Frankenstein Theory. This is from 2013. Uh, I actually enjoy this one. It's a found footage film. I believe it was, I believe it's a German film. I think. No, 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 it is an American film. It's an English film. A uh, really good found footage movie about, um, uh, Franken- the Frankenstein's monster. I do recommend that one. House two is on, uh, don't kill it with, uh, Dolph Lundgren. I started watching that and never got around to finishing it. I do plan on finishing that eventually. One day I returned to horror high from 87 Fido, which is it's, it's an interesting uh, horror comedy with Carrie Ann Moss, Bill Connolly and Dylan Baker. Uh, and then we have vulgar, really good film, pretty disturbing, really dark. Do you recommend uh, frontiers, which is, which is a, uh, it's a French sort of torture porn movie. I never got to finish it. Uh, I started watching it. It was really good though. I do plan on watching that as well. Uh, and then we have Madison County, which was directed by Eric England. Uh, I do want to watch this. This has been on my radar for quite a while. Uh, and Eric England did uh, a film called Contracted, which I did review on season one of Scream Stream. A really good film. If you can find that one as well, uh, can recommend. The second one, I don't think he had anything to do with that one. Uh, I think that was just somebody took his idea and kind of, with his permission, created a, a sequel to that. But that was a good movie, so I do want to watch Madison County, uh, hopefully real soon. And there's there's quite a few other films that have been added on Amazon. Amazon's done a really good job at, at getting some really good horror films there. Uh, Dead Heat from uh, 86 with Treat Williams and Joe Pis- Piscopo uh, and Vincent Price. Do you want to watch that? That's one of those classic classic horror comedy sort of, of films. And uh, that that's really all, all the ones for... Uh, Amazon that I wanted to point out. Uh, Hulu's got a few, but I haven't really been through Hulu to kind of get a good idea of, of what's there. I will be checking out checking those out uh, this week and maybe uh, give you a list next week. But yeah, as for Netflix, just not real impressed. Just not real impressed anymore. <laughs> they've 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 let me down. Maybe maybe this week they'll, they'll get some good stuff, uh, and we can talk about that next week. But that's going to do it for this week's episode of Scream Stream. If you'd like to keep up with me outside of the podcast, you can do so at ScreamPod.com. There you can find links to all of my social profiles, listen to the most recent episodes of the show, and subscribe to the podcast via your favorite podcatcher like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many more. Remember, if you want to hear the past two seasons of Scream Stream, head over to Patreon.com slash Jimbo Lewis, and you can get access to those for just $1 a month. If you have a movie you'd like me to review, email me at screamstreamcast at gmail.com. Music used for Screamstream was created by Kevin McLeod over at incompetech.com. And until next week, I'm Jimbo Lewis saying, if it was real, the cameraman would be dead too. Good night. Good night.